Hi guys, it's Claris and welcome to another video tutorial with me. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's tutorial on the eucalyptus leaves uh, that we kind of did in a very abstract form and a loose form. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If not, please do check it out. I'm listing it above. And uh, for this week, we are continuing with the leaf trend and we're going to create uh, one of my favorite leaves to paint and those are the peony leaves. And I am going to be fashioning them in a wreath manner almost, so like in a circular, uh, I guess, pattern. And so for that, we're going to be using the brushes number eight, number four from the silver black velvet line of mine. Uh, for colors, we're using green and yellowish green by St. Petersburg. I am going to keep some of the Matter Lake red handy on the side just in case I am motivated to do roses during this session or I might split this in two videos. Let's see at the end of this. I have my um, palette ready by Lisi Arts and I got my water ready and then obviously my paper as listed is by Canson. So if you guys are looking for any of these materials uh, you can find them in the description below. I do have affiliate links to them for Amazon, so feel free to purchase from there if needed. All right, we are ready to begin. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we have our colors um, mixed, but then in the midst of that, we also need some sort of circle so we can create a circle here and then create our leaves around it. So you know what? I am going to use my beautiful brush holder by Alice or designs by Alice on uh, Etsy and I believe she's on Instagram as well and I'm just going to turn this over and create my circle using this. Anything that's handy that you have on the table you can use to kind of create your circle. So just going to go all the way around, create my circle. Perfect. So now I'm going to put this back on. It's a cool brush holder, I know, because you're supposed to be drying your brushes this way so that the water doesn't seep into the handles. So putting that aside. Oh, and uh, the brush holder is also listed in the description below, so in case you're wondering. All right, so we are ready to begin. We're going to start off by mixing some color. So let's start off by mixing the my favorite green, which is right here, and mixing it on here. And what I will do is I'm going to use the number eight to create my larger leaves and then the number four to create the smaller leaves. And I really like the peony leaves because they are nice, thin, and long. And they're, the way they kind of grow and almost like in a pattern together is quite attractive to me. So I'm mixing some of the other green, which is the light green. Now I don't want the yellowish green to be by itself. That's why I'm mixing it in uh, with the leftover green that I had on my brush. And they look kind of similar, but they really are not. All right, so we've got this. In fact, I'm going to introduce a little bit of the ochre in here as well. And I'm just going to get the number four to mix the ochre in. Let's just do that. Really trying to activate this color here and then just mixing it in. I sort of bring this in here. I just realized that you're not able to see me, but you guys know how to mix color. You guys know this stuff. All right, so I'm just going to mix it like half this way and then leave it. And then as I need color, I'm just going to dip into these different areas that give me these colors. All right, so we are ready to actually start painting. So I'm going to um, create the stems that go outward and then start creating the leaves on them first. So that's my first um, 
tip in terms of planning how we're doing okay, this. So we are finally ready to start. I am going to be creating um, my stems and then we're going to be doing the leaves protruding from the stems. So I'm starting off with the number eight and I'm going to get some color directly from this brush. And here's what I'm going to do, just dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm going to go ahead and start creating a stem. The first one is going to be down here. And then I'm going to start by doing one leaf over here, so pressing down and trailing off. And then I'm just going to dip the tip in water. And I'm going to do one more on this side. There we go. Now dipping the tip in water again, I'm going to get a little bit of the lighter green on this tip. And then I'm going to create another leaf right here. Then again, dipping the tip in water, getting some of the lighter green. I'm going to create another leaf happening on this end. Pushing it down, perfect. And now finally, I'm going to get some more of the dark green that I did. And I'm going to join this and just touching the edges here ever so lightly. And then just getting some more of the lighter green, I'm going to go ahead and create some more leaves protruding over here. And then one more here. And it's almost like a really pretty symmetrical pattern almost. And I guess that's why I kind of like these peony leaves. And I'm just trying to get some nice two-tone greens happening, which is why I'm kind of going over and just adding, moving this extra dark color around. And we've got some really nice hues happening there. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing all around. So again, I'm going to get some of my darker hues because I want it like nice and dark. I'm going to get it directly from the from the palette and then kind of go ahead. So let's do one over here on this end. And this time I'm going to start off by doing the bottom leaves first. Dipping the tip in water, I'm going to do the protruding side one and adding some darker hues at the bottom. Then getting some of this lighter color hues. I'm gonna create my next one here. And the point about switching your greens really helps when you're, so now I've got a little bit of dark um, green and I'm going to create another pet, uh, petal leaf right on the side here, right? And the reason is so that I can get some nice differences between the leaves and create almost like a two-tone 2D kind of look that'll help. Doing another one here. Now, what I would ideally like for to happen over here is the middle one to be a lot longer. And so we've got the tallest to like smaller going as we go downward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to try something different and I'm going to switch out my, my number eight for the number four when I'm creating the smaller leaves at the bottom. So I'll just leave the number eight for the larger leaves in the top and let's just see how that works for us. So moving on to the next area, I'm going to go ahead and create some leaves happening over here on this end at the top. So let's just do the first one. Just like that. And then just getting a little bit of green from here. I'm going to do these next ones just ever so lightly, slightly below the first one. 
so we can get that nice hue um, shape happening. And now we're going to go in with the number four and I'm going to get some slightly different lighter green for this and starting at the bottom have it go that way so this would be a great exercise for your leaf uh, practice if that's what you guys are struggling with so love how that turned out we're going to go ahead and create them all around and continue and just so I don't make this too long a video you guys have got the hang after doing three of these right like me showing you so I'm going to make the rest of it a time lapse and then we'll get back when we're done So this is what we have ended up with. I am now going to kind of fluff this up and give it a little more depth by adding a couple of leaves on the outskirts and they can just be like stray leaves that are uh, filling up certain areas. So for instance, like this one seems to be a little bit extra long. Although mind you, you don't have to make everything look absolutely perfect. So it doesn't have to go that route but I would like to kind of add a little bit extra detail. So that's what I'm going to do. And this time I am going to use the, I'm going to stick with using the number four so I don't get massively huge leaves. And I'm going to get some of my yellow ochre and just add that in with the green that I have previously mixed up already. So give me one second to just mix this up. And once we have a nice enough green, we can start laying this down. Just adding a little bit more here. And we're going to start by adding some, let's see, I'm going to add one over on this end here at the bottom. So we're just going to do like a tiny little stem and then I'm gonna dip the tip in the dark green. I'm gonna get a nice leaf happening right there. And then for the stem, I'm just gonna add additional of that green that we've mixed. So it kind of goes in nicely and just fluffing some of the green around. Perfect. Uh, let's create another one over on this end here, but on a smaller scale. Just like that, perfect. Um, now we can add a couple more. Just gonna mix some of this color first. So it would be nice to have them diagonally so I'll do one over here. And 
And notice, try to leave a little bit of white space in between the leaves if you can. That's always like a nice feature in this loose style of painting. And then just throw in like a nice dark shade of green. Give us some nice variations of color. Even by adding that, it's almost giving us texture as well. Like linear texture, I mean. Then we can even do, we'll do one over one, two, three. I got some nice white space happening here. Uh, this for this next leaf, I'm going to add a darker version of this. It's kind of doing it something like that. So I'll actually make it like a three. A set of three. And then just loosely let it kind of fade off there. Perfect, so we've got one there, we've got one here. I don't like how this is looking, so I'm just gonna add another one. I didn't like the edge. So I am switching it by just adding one more over there. Perfect, and now I think we can add one at the bottom. I know it's looking like one, two, three, four. Uh, but yeah, so be it, let's do it. Let's add one here, kind of just coming out of this these leaves here. That's not too bad, right? I actually kind of really, really like that. And then we can even add, I'll just add one protruding from here. Just because it looks, it gives it better shape, I think. And I'm just going to take some of the darker green and just add that here so it looks like it's part of this bit. Perfect and let's see so we've got some good variations just because this one has a third and there's like sorry like a fourth and everywhere else is pretty much like symmetrical. I'm going to add one more over here. Make it a little more random in terms of where the leaves are placed so it doesn't look like a symmetrical painting. And finally, I know I wanted to do I want to do some tiny ones using the lighter green happening over on these bottom bits. So just like that. And those are fairly easy to do as well, so just going to continue on and then once that's done we are pretty much finished and we're able to kind of move on to the next bit of what we want to do with our beautiful green crown or I don't know whatever you want to call it really again so therapeutic to do very calming to the senses I love it. I'm going to get a little bit of dark green and just add it just at the tip. And just even on this one over here, just a tad bit more. And then push all the color down to the bottom. Perfect. So leave it at that. Um, I'll do one over here on this end too. And I think it's safe to leave the other ones as is so they look a little more sporadic and not looking like they need to be all symmetrical. I will do one um, loose, tiny version of a leaf kind of just over here on this end. And yeah, that's it. So. Now that we've done this, we can move on to the next bit of our painting. So we are ready to go on to the next bit. And here's what we're going to be doing. 
We are going to be adding some detail in some of the leaves, mainly the bigger ones and maybe the darker ones, uh, by adding some vein details. And we are going to use a metallic. Feel free to use a white gouache or if you want to use a darker green. I'm just using uh, a number two brush and getting some of this nice gold that I have by Windsor Newton. And uh, we're going to be painting this and making it more elaborate. So um, if you're looking for what kind of gold I am using that is also listed below so please feel free to check that out all right so this is how we're gonna be I'm just gonna do a quick um, I guess show of how I'm doing this and then I'll make the rest of time lapse just so you guys are not watching this forever so I've got some gold and I'm gonna go to like one of the areas that is darker and I'm just gonna add a middle line and then the veins are just going to be, I'm going to try and get, get it to be as thin as possible. And if you're not able to get it super fine, that's okay. This is a loose style of painting. It'll turn out fine anyways, so do not worry. I'm getting some more of the gold. Because a lot of it has settled to the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that I am able to get a good enough amount on it. And we are continuing with this pattern throughout these set of three leaves. So you can see it's not completely connected in some areas. I'm kind of loosely adding it here and there. Like the lines are breaking up. And... We're going to continue and do some pretty much all around. So I'm going to make this a time lapse just as I promised previously. All right, so this is what it ended up looking like. And I just have some leftover gold and I'm just gonna do some splatter with it because I don't like to really waste um, any of it. And why not? Because I think the splatter always adds something really nice and loose, extra loose, along with texture to all the uh, loose style of botanical leafy paintings that we do and so that's why I'm just gonna have a little bit of splatter happening with the leftover gold and we are officially done so this is how it turned out guys I hope you guys have liked this. Let me know in the comments. Uh, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Um, and uh, stay tuned for part two. I have decided I really like how this has turned out. And <clears throat> I'm going to have a part two for this. And in part two, we are going to do some really pretty roses in the center. If you have been following me on Instagram, you have seen me post a lot about my beautiful Eden Rose uh, plant that's growing and so this is a rose from it and I would love to sort of have some roses of this caliber in the center so stay tuned on how we can paint roses like this 
and enhance our pretty composition here of leaves. I know these are peony leaves and this is a rose, but I like it and this is what we're going to be doing. So hope you guys are excited. Stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram. Tag me on Instagram when you do this and you post these images and follow me on Facebook. Thanks guys.